<clears throat> I have two brass balls. And these... <laughs> I've been obsessed with the crown jewels since the first season of The Crown. I made the St. Edward's crown twice. I'm in the middle of a long build of the scepter. And yeah, this is gonna be the orb. The orb, the holy orb. A six inch polished gold ball with pearls and decorations around it. And this is gonna be the main body of the orb. It seems to resonate out at about this plane. That's where it's loudest, here. Ooh. Anyway, uh, that's not important. What is important is how do I join these together? How do I cut them, first of all? And then how do I, wow, that's such a neat sound. How do I, how do I cut them and join them? Now, the thing about the, the, the holy orb is that it has this strip around the middle. Do I even have the measurement on that strip? I don't want this ball, I don't want the orb, my orb to part in the middle. I want it to part underneath the middle because I want, I want it to be, I want to be able to build the whole orb with the, with the, uh, ring of jewels and pearls around, and then there's one that goes up and over, and it's in a cross with a little amethyst. Um, that means that I want to mark these in two different positions to get them to meet, and then I think I actually want to utilize some of the cutoffs to create a lip for attachment. That's the plan. But first, I... First... I simply need to mark these at their three, at, they're exactly six inches in diameter. And I, I'm basically just gonna make a whole, a whole ball out of these two balls. That's the, that's the goal. It looks like a cell undergoing mitosis. I'm just, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tackle this thing. Hold on. We're gonna measure the size. We're gonna measure. Look, I believe just me not saying we're going to measure my balls is like a fantastic amount of restraint. There, I just said it, so I don't have that restraint. But I didn't say it in situ and try and pass it off as a joke. Do I get extra points for that? Um, no. Oh, they're made to a pretty exacting standard. I'm going to open... Uh, actually, yeah, I'm just going to see... That is within a 30 second. That is within 30 thousandths. That is within 30 thousandths of being correct. Okay, so I'm gonna put these up on the lathe and I'm gonna mark their middles. Now, I'm not gonna try and cut these on the lathe, but marking their middles will be very easy. I, I basically have to set them up uh, touch off on this end and then make three inches back from there, three inches back from there. And that'll be my mark. And I'm going to make that mark very precisely. I'm going to paint some blue dicom marking fluid. Uh, and I'm not going to grab on and hold super firmly with the lathe chuck. I am just going to hold on just sort of, oh, whoops, I want to go the other way. Just sort of slightly positive grab. All right, I'm gonna use this to start the cut.
start. I was. I started all three of these cuts with a uh, cutoff wheel. I don't love cutoff wheels. I. I know there are whole YouTube channels devoted to making things using only cutoff wheels, and I think I've seen people make like full pieces of farm equipment, earth moving equipment, using nothing but a cutoff wheel. All hail the power of the cutoff wheel. I just don't love them as a as a mode of cutting. So uh, here we go. I'm gonna make three cuts here. Okay, making a second cut. And this is the, this will end up being the lip. Very happy. Now I'm gonna make this third cut. Here we go. That's the bottom. And now uh, we're gonna do the top. Honey, you're the bottom, I'm the top. All right. Trim this a little bit on uh, this sander, belt sander, disc sander. Uh, yeah, I basically have to sand back the bottom part in order to, because it's a little bit of a bigger radius. Yeah. <sighs> Damn it. Thought I was filming. Wasn't filming. Uh, I did all this really brilliant work. I was so smart. It was just crazy what you missed. I was like a freaking genius. It was, it was just amazing. Uh, so, uh, where we were was that this piece is a little bit, was a little bit wider in diameter than its mate. And I basically, uh, crept up on it by making marks and then sanding it on the disc sander. Uh, I used this as a handle. Really. It's like one of the great sequences ever shot for YouTube, and it's all lost to time. All right, I, I think that's a reasonable place to call it a day today. Yeah. <laughs> Since this isn't a how-to channel, it's more of a mistakes were made channel. Come on, stay put, there we go. Uh, you probably saw this disaster happening, but I didn't accommodate for the thickness of the material. I was I was picturing a spherical cow in my head, and thus, uh, this, which is meant to be the receiving lip, is, I cut it too close. So, what I'm going to need to do is actually make a slice here, file it, and get it in there, and then I'll get the, um, and then I'll get it shoved in there, and it'll fit both this and that. Yeah, yeah, that's what we'll do. I'm ready for my Eastern European Women's Choir. I'm sure of it. Okay, hold on. Here we go.
Slice. Sleeche! Now the question is, with that bit missing, is it enough? And the answer is, nope. I've got to take a little bit more off. Yes. Huh. How much, how much, how much can, apparently a lot. <laughs> how much can I mess this up? Apparently a fair bit. All right, let's try something. I'm not sure I understand why things are weird, but we'll find out. So, interesting. Okay. So, I'm just going to tape that in. All right. So, this is technically what I want. Let's just see if that... Yeah, so that's that's what I need. I just made that gap too big. So I'm just gonna have to remedy that. We're gonna remedy that tomorrow. In the meantime, now I have a stand. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, all right, yeah. And I've got this extra little chunk. That is the chunk that will replace that little bit of dumbness for me. I know, I shouldn't say dumb. It's interesting the way different cultures deal with self-deprecation. I'm not gonna have a big discussion about that. It's time to go home. It's 5.35, I, I'm hungry. I will see you guys tomorrow. Well, it'll be like. Yes, hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, well, uh, in the recent past on this channel, I have been making parts of the British royal family's crown jewels. Uh, as to why is still up in the air, um, it's not, <laughs> it's, <laughs> you know, there are people in the comments of the last videos about the, the, the scepter and the crown that are like, mm, for a former colony, you seem pretty like royal obsessed and hard to dispute, but uh, it's not that I'm like interested in some return to a monarchy at all. In fact, um, I believe I'm kind of, I, I am fascinated by these objects because of both the, the beauty, beauty and horror that they represent in n unequal measure, more horror than beauty. But they're, <laughs> you know, this is like crows like shiny things. This is like a highly codified version of this species wise. Okay. Um, we don't have to get too deep in examining the whys and the wherefores, but in the crown jewels, the three major components of the crown, the scepter, and the holy orb. Now, the holy orb uh, gets a cross on top, and as I've been researching, it stands for uh, 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 the dominion of power of the king or queen, it's literally the cross stands over the globe. This is our earth and the cross is apparently uh, God. So um, no, no, no collection of the crown jewels would be complete without the orb and now it's time. There's an aspect of the orb which is that I need access to the inside of it in order to be able to attach stuff to it and do some construction around it. And I thought I would make that inside actually uh, a functional hinge. And I have some ideas about that. Um, but in the, uh, in the interim, uh, yeah, sorry, I guess uh, there's not much to say except that I've needed some little races. Uh, the, the basic instruction of this from here forth will be that uh, there'll be a a little brass channel and a second brass channel into which run strings of pearls. And then there's a similar pair of brass channels that comes up over the top, which also are filled with strings of small, like four millimeter pearls. So I've got this, um, I've got this, what looks like three sixteenths, I don't know, maybe even a quarter inch. Uh, not quite. At any rate, I've got this brass square tube, which I have cut in half on my bandsaw, and it cut in half quite nicely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, 
working on attaching these to the to the actual globe. And then once I have that, and then it's time to drill some holes and then it's time to work out some hinges, etc. There are some funny engineering things that I have to solve in this, which is why I keep pausing, but I think it's just time to start working. Let me move these to a safe location. a part of these guys is going to be yeah 1.2 1.25 it could be 1.25 I like a round number I like me a round number the map of jewels strip is more than one inch wide Edges are bordered by three or four millimeter balls. Yes, jewels sit on 18 versus by 24 millimeter filigree and surrounded by rhinestones. Great. So I want to, first up, it's time to solder on. It doesn't even look like they're soldered on here. It looks like they're bolted. So kind of what I want to do here is because I have to bend this on a compound curve is I want to solder on the first bit of it. That's my goal. And then once I have the first bit soldered on, start to go stitch it all the way down. That's the goal. Oh, right. These are. Yeah, all right. So this won't work because this is like six millimeter. So these are better. So that's what I will do. Yeah. And then, right, so that gets, yeah. Oh, ah. I do you think? Yep, I like it. I like it like that. Um, so now, now I want to do the same thing I was planning to do before, which was to solder these on and then use the power of this. Oh, wait, sorry. So now I want to continue with what I was planning, which was to. Where's the map? Oh, 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 let's get you a better view on this. Let's just try a little bit of solder and see if I can't just put some on there and let it soak in. Just a little bit of solder there. And we're gonna fill in the middle part so we don't we won't really see the edges of that. But let's see if this actually works. Okay, that is not very promising. Good to know. Hey, hey, clips are hot. Hot clips are hot. I don't know. Stop the presses. Man bites dog. Hey, that worked.
That's not bad. <clears throat> Some cleanup work to do here, but that is a track in which to fit the pearls. The pearls! I know they do look smaller than they are, but they're not, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, I made marks and then they moved and then I made more marks and then they moved again. So now I'm making the last set of marks and hopefully now that I've clamped them in, they won't move. Hey. Okay. Those marks look good. So now, I guess, oh yeah, it's just two of these. All right, I think I have, all right, I think I have here the stand for making this work. Uh, formerly, I was thinking that this was the top and this was the bottom, but now I realize that I'm gonna, so, I'm gonna solder on the two tracks up here and this will be the top. I don't know what it's gonna, yeah. And then it'll dispense something. What will that be? I don't know. Cigarettes? That would be weird. Um, here, I just want to show you the worst wing nuts I've ever encountered. Okay, see these guys? See these guys? These arrived. I don't know what they were a part of, but watch this. Look at that. Oh! Either that means I'm like the strongest mofo. It does not mean I'm the strongest mofo. Look at this. What the, I've tried to get rid of all of these. Ugh, such pieces of garbage. Not even garbage. Not even garbage. All right, sorry. I got a little emotional there. <laughs> For a second, I thought this said, big flaw. <laughs> Which, to be frank, I'm not sure I would have been big flav. I'm not sure I would have gone with that as the graphic because it really does look like big flaw. Great. And then we'll do one this one. Okay. Right, it looks like we have contact much of the way. Oh, I see where you went going. Okay. We're going to start with these two up here, center top. Then we're going to work our way down. I'm recording, right? Yes, I am. All right. There you go, wet it out. That's it, excellent. Same thing over there. Yes, good. Nice and even. So I actually think these look pretty freaking good. So I'm just gonna continue. 
between that one and that one. I'm warming up the underside just to kind of get everything to the right heat before I hit the silver solder. And then I hit the silver solder and it wets right in. Same thing over here. Don't need to do it quite as long because the heat spreads and we do the same thing here and it wets right in. <laughs> I love it. There we go again. Here we go again. Just what I am about to. All right, sorry. God bless America. Well, I think that these actually are all pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. Amazing. So now I want to get a little solder into there. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. This is a thing I built for a thing for a thing like this. So let's, um, great. Not putting too much. Look at that. It's almost like it was built for such a thing. Almost just like. Look at that. That's great. The goal is to get a last bit of solder in there and there. And I'm just going to get a little more. Sorry, a little bit of flux in there and in there. And a tiny little bit of solder there. Good. Ooh, that was close, but I'm very happy with how that finished itself. I don't want to trim this too close because I'd like to, yeah, I want to give myself just a tiny bit of extra room here. 25 thousandths, very small amount. And then we can try this out on this. See? Look at that. Okay, so, yeah. I'm going to hit this. How am I going to hit this? My body's like a punch bag of mic is going to hit it. Okay, it's looking like something. I have to do some polishing now because I can't ignore some polishing and sanding. I have to get rid of stuff like this and I got to get rid of some little marky marks like this business. You barely, yeah, that. Got to get rid of that. I need this to have a high polish. So from here, yeah, I think I may do a bit of polishing and then I'll work out the hinge business. This is great! I'm really, really happy with this. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Uh, I'm going to work my way up through the sanding grits here. I've got everything to about a 400 grit. I can chuck this into the lathe. I can't chuck this really into the lathe as it is. Uh, but I'm just going to slowly work my way up through the up through the sanding grits.
Oh yeah. Okay. Polished. I yeah. Um so I hit this with a couple of coats of my favorite uh lacquer. I really love this nitrocellulose clear gloss gloss guitar lacquer from Color Tone. Um these are still drying, but like after polishing, this stuff wants to tarnish immediately. It wants to get dull and it wants to take scratches. So I wanted to get that out of the way because I'm about to start to thread a whole crap ton of, you know, pearls around the edges here. But what I really love is, come on. It's hard to grab these pieces. Oh, dude, dude, look at that. That's, I'm really happy. This, this is really, that's great. Um, and I'm not leaving fingerprints on it because the lacquer is protecting it and it's guitar lacquer. And I know it could be a little more polished, but that's yeah, fine with me. It's fine with me. It looks great. You can see your face. And once the jewels are all over it, nobody's going to notice. Uh, so I'm going to clean up a little bit so I could start manufacturing the jewels because there are <laughs> here. Oh. Here is the layout of the jewels. They are, uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 plus eight is 24, 22, 24, 22. Yeah, 14. <laughs> if this is, I have a particular condition in which I cannot do math on camera. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And uh, fair enough. 22 jewel, 22 jewel sets. And they're all, every single one is going to be custom on a bit of filigree. And the filigree all has to be bent to the correct size. Oh, right, right. I'm pausing because I had a six inch diameter chrome steel ball. And since I just cleaned up the shop, I don't know where it is, but it's precisely what I need to shape my uh, my filigree. I'm getting ahead of myself. Stage one, really complete, very happy. Let's clean up and move to stage two. Um, stage two, three, and four. One is manufacturing all 22 of the jewels in four different colors, green, red, blue, Oh no, three colors, green, red, and blue. Uh, and then there's a teardrop amethyst, which gets its own structural framework. And then there's the cross, which is its own whole build with pearls and diamonds. So yeah. I understand how I'm going to install the pearls Earls. I'm going to use this stuff. Yeah. So I need a hole at the very, very bottom of this guy. The question is, let's go to a high speed. in my head let's also look for the jewels the jewels from like the green bin and the green bin is good I like that green oh yeah okay now I just need like a bunch of those well it's a new day um let's see where we're at uh, I'm really happy with how everything went yesterday. I'm really, really happy. Uh, I kind of got 
some real progress on the jewels that are on the side of this thing. They're appreciably close for me. Uh, the fit and finish of this ball is something I'm I'm quite pleased about. Um, but I'm at this, there we go. Oh, I'm at this point in the build where there's a lot of busy work to do. I gotta make 22, 21 more of these. These two didn't quite work out. At any rate, I got a lot of busy work to do. And these, these are interesting projects, projects like this with lots of little parts to do. Um, the jewels are, I'm going to start on that first because I feel a little morning energy and the coffee is flowing through me. Uh, and I, I like that, but I know that I know myself, I know thyself, and I know that um, there'll be a point in which I run out of some steam on that front. Uh, and in that case, the next thing I will do is I'll go on to threading some pearls. I've solved, these tracks are effectively little races for the pearls to sit in, little, um, little U shapes. And to be, Completely honest, I think that's exactly how they were done um, on the real thing. Because, well, number one, you can see that all the pearls are sitting along the edge of a line. And then you can see that that line does not meet the ball perfectly. In this photo, you can see clearly that the line that the pearls sit in is, uh, it's got a little gap between it and the ball. And that gap is one that I've ended up with as well. So I think that it's plausible they their construction. My construction is similar to the original. Doesn't really matter, but it's just I like noticing the witness marks of construction. Um, I also need to get on the amethyst cross arrangement for this. This is not the most beautiful amethyst. It's fine. It's a drawer pull I found. Uh, bonus, I have eight of them because that was the smallest number I could purchase them in. Um, I have been using smarts that I obtained from YouTube. Oh, something just occurred to me. Anyway, I've been using smarts that I obtained from YouTube for the jewelry and it has been working quite nicely. Uh, that is to say... Plant foam is a terrific substrate for uh, costume jewelry. And although uh, although Play-Doh is uh, also talked about as an excellent substrate for holding costume jewelry pieces while you solder them, um, I, um, I don't know, I feel... <laughs> <laughs> of the two, I feel like the plant foam speaks to me and allows me the kind of freedom to screw up the way I like it. Mm. Uh, yeah, we're going to get into some production on some jewels. That's, that's the reality. All right, I'm gonna stop mucking with it because I think I got it. The real trick here is patience, man. Just like letting it set because it all gets real hot. But hard to be hard to be unhappy with these two excursions. I was just listening to some copyrighted music while working, and I thought I would tell you a story. Uh, years ago, I was working in a special effects shop, uh, and names will be uh, changed and obfuscated to protect <laughs> the innocent. It's not that kind of story. Anyway, uh, I was working in a special effects shop, and at, like many special effects shops, there was music playing all day long. <clears throat> and 
I can't remember if Brandy, the song Brandy, was actually playing. Brandy, you're a fine girl. You might have heard it in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I grew up with that song. And I'm working in this model shop. It's like 2001. And this guy who's a new hire, I don't know him very well. I never got to know him very well. Uh, he's kind of quiet. He was kind of quiet. He sort of kept to himself. And he comes over to me one day while I'm working and he goes, Hey, yeah. Oh, packages. Okay, I've already given way too much preamble to this ridiculous, silly story, but this guy comes over to me and he goes, Hey, Adam, do you know the song Brandy? And I'm like, Brandy, you're a fine girl. What a good wife you would be, that song. And he's like, Yeah. Do you know what it's about? Now, that's an interesting question culturally, right? Because I grew up with a Carly Simon song called You're So Vain, which was famously like, could it be about Mick Jagger? Or maybe it was about Warren Beatty. There was all this debate about it culturally. So when someone says, do you know what that song's about? You start to think, well, maybe Brandy is some hidden narrative about some movie star or famous person that we don't know about. That sounds really cool. And I said, no, what's it about? And he said, it's about this waitress and she works in a seaside town and, uh, she serves all the fishermen and the guys who, you know, live on the ocean. And they all tell her that they think she's a great gal, but, uh, you know, they can't be with her because the ocean is kind of their wives. It's like their mistress, right? And I'm like, I'm not sure if I'm being punked. And I don't want to insult this person, but I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of got that from the lyrics. And he goes, yeah, I never listened to them before. That's my story. <laughs> yeah, just a weird interaction. I still don't quite understand it. But, you know, he listened to the lyrics and he liked it. He liked the story and he wanted to share. There you go. All right. So here's what I'm learning about this jewelry thing. Is that, boy, it takes a nice light touch, really. Uh, that's specific. Yeah, seriously light touch. Um, everything's quite delicate. It's all very volatile. And it wants to move on you. But if you really do have like a nice small gap between each piece and its predecessor, one, two, three, four, five, five. I need one more, one more, uno mas. Um, if you really do get it all touching, get all the pieces so that they're correctly touching each other, then you can enjoy. Uh, and then, yeah, so it's first off, it's about getting everything to touch correctly. And then it's about getting it all to um, not, you know, so I keep one hand on here. So as I dip the solder, I'm not bumping it every single time. I'm using tweeter, tweeters, tweezers for placement where necessary. I'm also using this big heavy block, which is a little tiny machinist's angle block um, to kind of level everything out. Um, I think that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh, hey. I'm sticking a 172 screw out of the back of each one of these bits of jewelry so I can take this thing apart. There we go, okay. So let me get a camera on there for you. First pass is to get it all kind of warmed up. And then I start to heat above and just let little beads of solder fall where I can get them. And I'm just trying to get, yeah, see how much it moves? Yeah, it's uh, it wants to move on you. So I'm just going slowly and gently. And now I'm starting to see like how I'm doing it is sort of matching what I've been seeing on the YouTubes of like that really gentle touch for each lay down of solder. Yep, yep, yep. And it's also part of the touch I'm learning is knowing that you've got the saturation you're looking for Okay, 
I feel like that one's done. <sighs> you know, uh, as I'm a skill collector and I talk about being a skill collector, there is something I noticed that that unifies almost all skills that I learn, whether it's playing the guitar or mold making or machining or juggling or jewelry making, unicycling, you know, you name it. Every one of these things that I have learned how to do, and I have learned how to do, that I have learned um, involves a turn where you realize you're overthinking, overforcing, adding too much strength to the equation. And that, that the lightness of touch is everything. And cooking, dancing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It's all about the lightness of touch, not about the uh, uh, um, It's a pretty impressive commonality across all things that I have discovered. Mm. That I have discovered, I mean, that I have come to learn for myself. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. All right, gotta get that one in. So that's the other thing is, is if you're careful about it, you got plenty of room in the jewelry making to, uh, to fix a mistake. So here we go, we're just gonna fix this one. One of the things that I really dig about the plant foam, about this stuff, is that for the next preparation, all I need to do is slice this off of the bandsaw. All right, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Boom! Let's put on some pearls! Okay, so the jewels, I'm gonna, maybe I put on the jewels for, it's hard to say. The jewels are always centered, which is great. side oh right so if that's that side and that sits there and that means yes this one
Oh, yeah. Uh, so I've got the first set of pearls on and they're good. I like them. They, uh, yeah. So that's one, two, one sixth of the way there. Jesus Christ. That was tiring. I don't mind telling you. I'd much rather just glue these in place, but alas, I can see that would not fly. I think that's my last two greens uh, ready to go. And then I've gotten all the jewels across my orb, if you know what I mean. It's a new morning. Um, I successfully made 20 jewels last night. I had two failures. There's two that are not ideal, but you'll never know. Anyway, um, It's a weird object. Also, apparently these go way back. The idea of the globe, the cross on top, um, that goes back past the seventh century. Uh, very, very old symbology. The orbs symbology of the cross atop the globe. So once I finish this, uh, I've got to do the pearls, which are a real pain in the ass. And then the cross. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, I think that I may end up, I'll be honest with you, as, as if I'm, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, um, I may do some work on the beads, on the pearls, and then the cross. I may go back and forth, specifically because it's such a pain in the butt. Um, but I am going to string up a bunch of pearls first because that will be easier if I do it that way. My uh, niece stayed with us for a while last year and she is a jeweler and uh, I she set up a little desk uh, near the room she was staying in and did a lot of jewelry there and I watched her doing tons of beading and I know that there are faster ways to do this um, I just don't know what they are and I haven't researched them, but it, man, I tell you, it does give me a lot of, uh, respect for the meditation of beating because that is real. All right, let's see how, how, how close I got here. Very, very happy with that. Okay. So we're going to end up with one coming through. Let's see. One's going to come through here. Ho, ho, ho. Don't you do it. Okay, so I think... Did I really get that? Is that really exactly how many it is? Hold on. Before I commit, I just want to double check. Yeah, that is. That winds all the way up. Okay. So I can install that with confidence. And now... I've got these six pairs of holes. I can't even tell you how tiny these holes are. I can. They're in fact 20 thousandths of an inch in diameter. That is a drill bit that is four sheets of freaking paper. Okay, so that's great. Okay, second set of holes. This is not nearly as tedious as I was afraid it was going to be. One goes there. And one comes over here. Great. And then...
Come on. I saw you go through. Come on. Don't make me go get a magnifying glass. All right, there we go. Right? Okay, good. Okay, so. Yeah, 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 that's okay. Good, that's not bad. One goes through. And then, I know, I know, I know. I gotta soft place everything before I hard place it. Okay. Now I've got all five stirrups holding on to my bead chain at the correct number of beads, I think. We'll find out soon enough. Oh, no, I might be off by one. Yeah, I think this one is one. One more bead fits through. Come on. There you go. All right. I'm just twisting the wires back behind here, holding this all together. One more bead, let's see. One more bead. No, it wasn't. I can't tell anymore. I can't tell anymore. Oh. There you are. Ladies and gentlemen, that's great. Okay, hold on. Let's just... Uh, Get this twisty energy going. Here we go. Come on. There we go. Ow, I just poked myself. That's great. Pearls. Good. All right. Good. That is one third of the pearls done. I'm tired just thinking about it. All right, drilling the penultimate green jewel. Go a little lower there, yeah, there we go. Bellissimo. Lovely. Last green. The last green goes in. Yeah. Yeah, it's ready. So here's what we do. We're going to put the piece of tape so we can find its mark. Then, 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 then. Then we glue every nut and bolt. There we go. Now I see where the hole is. And I... Oh, yeah, same thing. I should have flattened these because I didn't. I should... <laughs> no, not that. Anyway. Oh, come on. Threading a 172 nut onto a... <laughs> with big fingers, <laughs> with giant fingers, it's not easy. Look at that. And with that, the body, they are not at the door. I refute your assertion. All right. So the cross is dimensional. It has some thickness, but it is mostly this Maltese 
thing with some five millimeter pearls in the corners, in the armpits, and on the ends, tall one here, sapphire on one side. Yeah, it's like a... Oh, that's neat. Yeah, I could totally do that. Then that would, yeah, 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 like that. Okay, I've got some lamp parts here, um, and that's how I'm going to be uh, attaching the cross to the globe. I've got a nice hole here, and one of these lamp parts, this one will go in there, and um, then this one will screw into that, and so I'll do all my attaching of the... Uh, all my attaching of the amethyst and the cross to that business. I'm gonna put that aside for right now, because right now I wanna cut out the cross. This is a total rarity. It is a tiny little shear. Oh, it needs a little loving care, it's true. Uh, but this is a little six inch shear, which they really, they're very hard to find shears like this. They just, uh, they're just pretty rare. So I'm gonna square up the edge of this. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Uh, then I am going to, I'm gonna measure out the width of this, which is, yeah. And is it the same top? Oh, it's not the same top and bottom. <laughs> okay, so this is 2.36 wide. And yet, it is 2.45, 2.55 long. So we will, uh, oh, I see. go. Now I have two pieces that are identical in size and they will be the body, the corpus. Yeah, it's not super flanged. Super flange! It is flanged. do that. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> okay. Um, I took time to do a different one day build. I steamed some hats. I get steamed about hats. Uh, but I'm back to it. Um, my, the orb is in great shape. Yeah, it's very happy. Um, so uh, it's time for the cross. That's, oh, I know I have to do the pearls around here. I'm just avoiding it really because that's really gonna be boring. Uh, yeah, I'll, it'll, it'll be a thing. Anyway, um, the cross. So here's the current setup for the cross. What I've got is a flat, piece of brass in the shape of the cross. And I'm starting to use these um, linked diamonds in their settings. And what I'm gonna do is, 
Here's how I'm hoping this works. I'm hoping to line this whole thing in these, and then I'm going to take silver solder and flux and secure them all to the brass here. And then I'm going to put a second layer on top of that. I know. Uh, and do the same thing. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm going to put a second layer on top of that. So basically the diamonds will be soldered back to back so that there'll be diamonds facing on both sides of the cross. Once I do that with silver solder, and then I think I'm going to add the filigree. It's a long thing. I'm going to add the filigree in soft solder so I don't melt the silver solder. That's the goal. Two different temperatures of solder. We'll see if it works. Well, I have to say, I'm pretty pleased with how this came out. I know my swoop isn't as swoopy as it could be, but freaking hell, I'm, yeah, yep, yep, yep. I'm, I'm, this is good. This is good, goodness, good thing. Now I have to figure out how to get it to mount to the top of the other thing. All right, I'm stringing the last set of beads. This set went well. This is the last set. After this, I clean up and we have an orb and I'm mostly, mostly done with the crown jewels. Now I may remake the scepter. I'm probably gonna remake the scepter. And there are some other bits and bobs, but damn, I'm so happy. <laughs> Happy with that thing. Woo! All right. Um, here we go. Yep. Okay, so this is the last hurrah of the beads. Of the bead. The venerable bead. <laughs> All right. I'm going to move that. And, oh, hey, don't you. Oh. Okay, so you are bent like that, and you come around. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I forgot they weren't attached to anything. Okay, so, right, this goes this way, and this comes this way too. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Wow, I think I got it. Okay, I'm gonna twist these to each other. And I'm not going to do it with the same crazy alacrity I did it before. Alacrity? 
Um, strength? Strength and honor. It's in. So let's get the CA glue here. And we'll do the same thing we did on the others. I know I began this video saying there was a fundamentally different way I was going to be attaching these. And the answer is, is that when I, when push came to shove, I almost lost a whole string of beads and it wasn't that much time invested. Stringing beads is a lot more boring in contemplation than it is in the actuality. Actually, my biggest issue with learning some of the ins and outs of bead stringing is, um, that the hardest thing is to stand in a way that won't hurt your body while you're doing it. To be fair, on my old 55 year old frame, I can easily spend too much time in one position and uh, things can get rough in a hurry. I'm literally touching every bead just to make sure I don't end up, any bead that's not glued down ends up, will, will end up becoming like a lever point against the others and I need them. All right. <laughs> oh, crazy. People are nuts. People are freaking nuts. This, that's... The world is a big, crazy, beautiful place. <laughs> People are totally nuts. Yes, yes. Now I have the holy hand grenade. Finally. I am really, really happy with how this turned out. It turned out better than I thought. And to be fair, I'm always kind of making a theater prop version of the stuff. I, 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 it depends. It depends. I know. Hold on. Okay, so... <laughs> I, this is funny. There, are, there, there were some comments in some of the other Crown Jewels videos. I replicated the St. Edward's Crown twice and the, the Scepter. And I may re-replicate the Scepter. But here is the, uh, the orb. The orb sitting on an amethyst symbolizing the church's dominion over earth. It is the least pretty of the crown jewels, frankly, to me. It is the most absurd looking. I don't find this object. I was more interested in this object from a technical standpoint of buying two brass spheres and making them actually register to each other. Um, I may still make a hinge on this for such a thing. Um, part of me, oh, I had, so I have an idea about what to, what functionality to add for this. And it's absurd. I'm, I'm thinking about making this a cigarette, cigarette dispenser. And, yeah, I know. Okay. Hold on. I want to show you something. So, um, a million years ago, I, I lived in New York and worked on my friend's student films because all my friends were at NYU Film School. And as such, we were poor students and had to art direct from wherever we could, wherever we could. And at one point, my buddy Davey and I are going through an abandoned storefront uh, in Hell's Kitchen. Um, it's a long story. You don't need to know the whole story, but there was like this a storefront that had been abandoned for decades. And we're going through it in flat with flashlights. And we're just trying to find some things to art direct this set that we're building. And I shine my flashlight across the floor and I see this bottle sitting there on the ground. And I'm like, well, that looks interesting. And I touch it and there's a slight slope to the ground and the bottle rolls away from me. And as it rolls away, it does this, yeah, it does this. It rolls and then it starts to separate and sing to me. <laughs> ha! 
how dry I am. And I just want to explain that when I touched this bottle that I thought was liquor and it began to roll away, separate, and stuff came out and it sang to me, I felt like the Matrix had broken. It was like... Uh, 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 and then I understood it's a cigarette dispenser for your bar cart with a lighter up here in the bottle cap. This is an amazing object, and I have kept it ever since. But that... I might, I might try and find something like this and put it in. <laughs> In the orb. Because <laughs> that's my sense of humor. The idea of uh, the <laughs> the idea of this being, would you like a cigarette? <laughs> yeah, makes me very happy. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects. Questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.